Sukue Yanade. Today we are going to be going back to the basics and I'm going to remake my most viewed video, the very first one, which is about the alphabet and pronunciation of Mandoa. Just like I said I would. So, there is an alphabet and pronunciation chart here on the screen, which I'm going to go through and explain. Thanks, Jeff, for making that for me. To start, we have the vowels. And there are five of the main vowels, though Y can also act as a vowel. And that's the A, which sounds like ah. The E usually sounds like E. Eh. However, it can sound like A, eh, usually at the end of the word, but I'll talk more about that later. I can sound like E. O sounds like O. U sounds like U. And when Y is acting as a vowel, it sounds like E. Then there are the vowel combinations. And sometimes when two vowels are next to each other, they create a diphthong or change from two distinct vowel sounds to one sliding vowel sound. Not all vowel combinations create diphthongs. And if they don't, then when they're next to each other, they remain separate sounds. But here is the list of the ones that do change. And AI makes an I sound. AY also makes an I sound. However, um, because when the language was created, uh, these rules weren't necessarily in place, so AY does sometimes make an A sound instead of an I sound. Uh, just go with what's, whatever seems right, I guess. AU uh, makes an OW sound. EY makes an A sound, the one that the AY sometimes makes. But EY always makes an A sound, which is also the same sound that the regular E can make. Um, but since the regular E can be either E or A, EY specifically is A. OI is oi. Oy is also oi because the y and the i are the same sound. And then oa is aw. So if any of the other vowels are next to each other that aren't these ones, they'll be separate sounds like u and i will be ui, not one sound. All right. Now we have the consonants which are mostly self-explanatory, but some need to be explained a little bit more in depth. Um, yeah, otherwise they're pretty regular, um, but if you have a question about a specific one, just let me know, but I'm just going to blow through them. So the B is a B, obviously. C is a little bit more complicated because it sounds like an S before an I or an E, but it sounds like a K before an A an O, or a U, right? D is D, G is G, like a G, H is an H, J is J, J, K, L, M, N, P, you got all those, all right? And then the R, the R is, it can be whatever R you choose, pretty much. Um, I prefer to do a tapped R, some people can't do that, and they just do the regular like English R that they know, or whatever you whatever really. It's not normally a rolled R, however. If it if you do that, that's fine. It, it just might sound weird, but uh, I like to do tapped R's between vowels, uh, but not usually next to consonants. It's whatever's easier for you to pronounce. That's the biggest thing, and then the rest of them S T V W, and then Y again, can be a consonant. All right, so then we have the consonant combinations, which are like the vowel combinations uh, in that they change sound, although they're not necessarily by merging them into one, although there is one that is that. So we have CH, which is CH, yeah? And then we have SH, which is SH, right? And then we have CY and YC. 
Now CY can make an SH or a CH sound. It's usually an SH though. And YC can make an SH sound, or if it comes after a consonant, the Y can actually be pronounced as a vowel, and it's, so it's ish. Right? All right, and then the TS is the one that is a combination. It is literally just tss, a T and an S at the same time. However, uh, some people can't pronounce this, and they do it as a Z. That isn't really right, but if you really can't pronounce it as a TS, then that's fine, but it is a TS. Um, and then the last one is a VH. Now, Mandoa was said to not have an F sound. It has an equivalent represented by VH. Now, because they didn't say what it was, only that it wasn't an F, we had to make guess ourselves. And what most people did was, well, if it sounds like an F, just use an F. And so some people just use an F. Um, other interpretations are an aspirated V sound, which isn't my favorite, uh, but it's common because it literally says VH on it. But uh, that's more like a, a V sound, but you blow a lot of air at the same time. But uh, my favorite is the, the last symbol there which sounds almost exactly like an F, but it's not. Because instead of touching your teeth to your lips like you do when you say F, you just make a small opening in your lips and make and blow the same way you would make an F, and it sounds almost exactly the same. It sounds like F, and F sounds like F, and you really can't tell the difference. And it's used as an equivalent in many other languages, uh, so that's why that's my favorite choice. But that's uh, that's all the combos, really. Next, uh, there's the baten, which isn't really a letter as much as it is punctuation, but it can sometimes have a sound. When it used as a sound, when it is pronounced, it's done so as a glottal stop or a short closing of the throat to cut off airflow for a moment like between uh oh. I usually pronounce it as such when it's between vowels, like mandoa. Though sometimes if I'm speaking quickly or not thinking about it, I may not. Um, usually if it's next to a consonant, I might not pronounce it, um, although it, it is possible, um, but there are so many uh, betene in language next to consonants and it can just get a little bit can basically make your words sound really choppy. Um, it just depends on the word and the situation you're in, really. Uh, it can rarely be pronounced as an unstressed vowel, but uh, pronunciation isn't its primary function. Rather, it's used as a grammatical tool to represent things like dropped letters, or as a joint between a word and an affix, or in another word. Uh, and that's where it is down at the bottom there. And that's, that's everything I have out on the chart, but I do want to bring up some other stuff. So it is said that there are some pronunciation variations between regional and ancient dialects. Some of examples of this variation is between D and T, V and W, V and B, and J and Y. And now that's only said that uh, just to explain the inconsistencies that occurred when the lyrics of the Repcom game were turned into an actual language, because they weren't before. And you shouldn't really take these explanations as something you necessarily should do. I mean, you can if you really want to, but for the most part, you should try to stay consistent with uh, the standard that everyone else uses when speaking for purposes of communication. If you really want to be understood, uh, Outside of that, though, you can really do whatever you want. Now, as for the writing, it can be written either horizontally or vertically. There are a few different script forms as well. In this chart, I use the classic script, the original one. However, the Disney canon script is becoming more popular, 
after it appeared in the Mando show in Boba's hologram, which is also an example of it being written vertically. I don't know if there's a preference on orientation, uh, probably just whatever fits better onto the surface being used. All right, so now the last thing I want to talk about is a fan interpretation, not canon. So if you don't care, uh, retouche me. So in Mandoa, there are some words that have double vowels. There is no rule that explains how this affects pronunciation. Sometimes not at all. Sometimes it changes the sound. Sometimes it changes the stress. It's a complete mess. If you want, just look at the pronunciation guide in the word in question. But even that isn't always consistent. What some of us have agreed on is that when a double vowel is in a word, that it should be taken as a long vowel, which means that you hold the vowel sound longer than you would if it was a single vowel. This works pretty well as it means that it doesn't change the sound or the stress of the word, only the length of that vowel. And because if you want to, you can ignore it really, because a lot of the time you don't even notice how long a vowel is held or it changes based on context. Uh, and in the dictionary, if you see a double A, U, or I, uh, they usually have no effect on the sound at all. But a double O and a double E, for some reason, change them from O and E sounds to U and I sounds. I believe this is just another Englishism that KT imported by mistake. Now, if you choose to embrace this idea that uh, it does change some of the way words are said to be pronounced in the dictionary. So like the word K-O-O-R, contract, or E-D-E-E -E -E for teeth. In the dictionary, it says that they're pronounced K-U-R and E-D-I, or Q-O-R, or E-D. But if you would rather treat it as length, then it would still sound like the vowel that's written just longer, so cor or ede. So anyway, double vowels as long vowels is only a community feature that we decided on, uh, so feel free not to do that at all and just do what the dictionary says. But you might get confused because of how inconsistent that is. So if you stayed for that, then let me know what you think of that idea. But that's all I have for you today. Retour chez me, bode.